Well, that was one way of testing camera stabilisation, but I wouldn't wholeheartedly recommend it. This, then, is a very quick review of the Instago 360. I was drawn towards this mainly because of its size, or lack of size, should we say. The whole thing weighs less than 19 grams. All that it has on the back is an on-off switch and the connections for the rather neat little carrying stroke charging holder, which also enables you to connect it to the computer. It caters both for Android, which is great for me, and there's also an, a lightning port for those of the Apple persuasion. Drop the camera back in and it automatically starts to charge it. You get an indication on the app on your phone as to the state of charge and the amount of memory left in the device. It comes with a whole raft of adapters and these all have magnetic latches to keep the camera in place. Obviously this camera is aimed at Instagram, hence the, the name, but they've taken, uh, taken note that people are using it for FPV use and they have updated the application now so that it supports a five minute stabilized camera mode. For my use then, this is the mount that I have on the front of my Bixler. I've printed this out of a flexible material. As you can see, camera just pops into there. It's held sufficiently snugly as you saw during the impact. It uh, didn't, didn't go anywhere. The original design from this is on Thingiverse and I'll provide a link down in the description. Although I have modified it myself, the original one only had the GoPro mount at this point and it was split so you had to clamp it together. I modified it by adding a similar GoPro piece and grafting it on there. If there is sufficient interest then I'll update this and put it onto Thingiverse for you. Let me know down in the comments. So I'm not going to go into huge detail on this beast. Uh, there's plenty of other YouTube videos that you can watch and get the, uh, get the detail on. I just wanted to give you my quick overview. Although it's called the Insta360, the actual field of view of the camera is only about 180 degrees, but that's generally sufficient. And the, the big point clearly is the stabilization, which is done in the app, or in my case, I prefer to use the PC application to process the video afterwards. One thing to note is that this does have a six axis gyro accelerometer set up in it. Therefore, similarly to setting up an, an aircraft with a gyro, once you switch the device on, make sure that it's level for a few seconds. I've seen people comment on YouTube that their, their videos were skewed at some strange angle. I believe that was because the camera was initialized in that attitude and that's what it decided the horizon was going to be. So I'll leave you now with some slightly better footage than my first crash. You can judge for yourself whether it's something you wish to consider.